Abel TV.
Abel TV. Holy Epus. Mungwa ta kula. Ini ya le kupesa nguvu zako. Akula. Sawa bas. Toka bani. Talani. Oh no. Akuna. Oh no, the king immediately leprosy. Immediately the leprosy, he became sick and died. Oh no, the king rebelled against the Lord, which led to his downfall. Success is impossible if the Lord is not with us. Let's look. the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. The, sad, the saddest thing of all is that he showed, uh, he showed no rumors for what he had done and apologetic to God. None of the inhabitants of Judah under the age of 55 knew of a life without King Uzziah. But these happy years of normalcy were over. King Uzziah sin was punished with leprosy and then died. The death of King Uzziah was the beginning of a period of uncertainty and fear. What will happen now? Who will lead the nation? Will the enemies invade? These are some possible questions that will come out of the, of the lips of of the inhabitants of Judah. This was the year of national crisis. And in, and in this year of crisis, in the year of King Uzziah, Uzziah died, the Lord God decided to call, cleanse, and send, send the prophet Isaiah on a great mission. In December, in December 2019, in the city of Wuhan, Thank you. Twenty. What happened? What happened in March twenty twenty? COVID. Panic, anxiety, depression, and death. Are these questions that the people of Judah ask not similar to ours in the midst of the pandemic that we have 
had to live through worldwide. What will happen to the pandemic? Will the, will the vaccine be the solution? What, what will happen to my family? Many questions, many questions and few, few human answers. What can we do when we get into crisis, especially when we least expect? It is one thing for us to experience a crisis that arrives in our lives and quite another is for used to generate it as Uzziah did when he entered the temple of God to offer incense without being a priest. Let's look at Isaiah's example which can help us get out of the crisis we must find ourselves in. The difference between Uzziah and Prophet Isaiah is tremendous. Okay, let's look at Isaiah's example. What does Isaiah do amid the crisis? Isaiah could have arranged a delegation to visit neighboring countries to sign peace arrangements. There could have been ongoing conversation with the men of the military power. He could have tried to create his own political or religious party. In the first verse, we do not find Isaiah in the palace, nor in the chamber of commerce. We find Isaiah in the temple. In times of crisis, he saw the Lord. The Lord is glad to see him there and rewards him with a very important vision. Not a vision of a future, not a vision of a future with a thousand years of peace. It is not a vision about the destruction of the enemies of Judah. No, God knew ex very exactly that Isaiah needed. No, God knew exactly what Isaiah needed. Dear Pathfinders, Isaiah needed an encounter with God. A time of relative calm came to an end, and now the future looked very uncertain. God's relationship with Isaiah teaches us that he can use those seasons of difficulty and pain. In God's hands, times of crisis provide an opportunity for personal growth. In times of crisis, we need to seek the Lord as Isaiah. We need to enter his temple, his presence, to have an encounter with him as Isaiah did. We need to recognize the holiness of God. We need to recognize our sins and turn away from evil. We need to let God cleanse us. We need to hear his voice. We, we need to obey the voice of God. We need to respond joyfully to his call. In times of crisis, we should look, away, look for a way to change. Before crisis hits, we say with joy that our future is in God's hands. But when the crisis hits us, when our savings are stolen, when we lose our job, when our health fails, our future doesn't look so secure. Maybe it is easier to trust the Lord when we feel strong, secure, and in control of things. The crisis shatters this semblance of security. For the Lord, it was important for Isaiah to feel his own smallness. And for that to occur, he showed him his greatness. It was important to the Lord that Isaiah felt his sin, for which he showed him his holiness. The crisis you, re you live through is also an invitation to draw near to the Lord, to look at the Lord and then look at yourself. It is an invitation to examine yourself sincerely. In the Lord's hands, Crisis is a tool to awaken us from religious routine and monotony, to show us mistakes and lies in our way of thinking, to help us see and correct priorities that do not honor God. Instead of looking for the culprit of your crisis, examine yourself in God's presence. Before we go out for the Lord, we must meet him and receive his power. We must acknowledge our sins. We must let him cleanse us. We must give him the first place in our lives. We need to be purified. We must receive his forgiveness, his presence, and his salvation. And it says, And he said to him, If thy presence will not go with me, do not carry us up from here. Yes. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. 
if we have met God and his presence goes with us, then we can say, I'll go because your mercy has reached me, because you have blessed me, because I'm forgiven, because you have saved me, because you have shown me your greatness, because I am indebted to you and always will be. There is no safer place than to be in your hands. I'll go because I'm committed to you, because you love me first and you gave your all for me, because I love you. I'll go even if the heavens collapse. I'll go no matter what happens. I'll go for I trust you are almighty. I'll go because you promised to be with me always. Take note that the Lord never asked Isaiah, what do you want to do? The Lord gives him concrete instruction. Go and tell these people, be ever hearing but never understanding. Be ever seeing but never perceiving. The, the Lord knew very well what the task was. We may have our choices, tests, and preferences. But when we say to the Lord, here I am, send me, we must be open to his answer. Before the crisis hits, you felt somewhat dissatisfied with your friendships, family, church, studies, work, health, and finances. In conclusion, what was the difference between Uziah and Isaiah? Someone to get the answer. What was the difference between Uziah and Isaiah? Okay, the answer is, the results of the entrance to the temple in both cases were very different. Uziah entered and left with physical leprosy and in his heart. Isaiah instead entered the temple and came out purified. Never forget, in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 and 4, God does keep him, keep him perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on there, because he trusts in thee, trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. Yes, it says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Okay, let's turn... Let's go, let's go back to the story of Todd. I want to finish telling, telling you the story of Todd, the teenager who, last, who sadly lost a, a leg. Remember? Yes, an accident of such magnitude would have been enough to kill anyone's hopes, but not Todd's, as evidenced by the fact that several years after the accident, he graduated as a psychotherapist and became the clinical director of a support center for people with physical limitations. His greatest achievement, however, came in the practice of his favorite sport, mountaineering, to demonstrate that trust in God and willpower can overcome the greatest challenges. Todd set out to climb the highest peak in each of the 50 states of the USA in less than 100 days. He achieved it in 66 days and with only one leg. Can you imagine? The previous record was 101 days. In his book of the Edge of the Impossible, Todd Houston recounts that the greatest challenge he faced was as he ascended the McKinley Peak in Alaska, 7,000 feet high, during snowstorms and frequent avalanches. One day, while he was ascending the McKinley, Todd encountered a group of climbers. How's that up there? Todd asked. There are strong winds and storms, replied one of them. But did you manage to reach the peak? Todd asked. No, we couldn't, replied the man. Survival was obviously important for Todd, but he decided to move on. And not only did he complete the ascent to Mike and Lee, but he also became the only person with a disability to win the world record in a sport for athletes without physical limitations. How could Todd accomplish this feat? His answer is, is direct. Through faith in God and in the capacities he has given us, we can overcome any challenge that life presents us with. 
Take note, Pathfinders, that a crisis can be what God will use to motivate a serious change in your life. Todd Houston's life changed, Isaiah's life changed. They were never the same person again, but they triumphed because they saw the Lord. And I would add, only God can give you the victory forever. Tell him today, dear Pathfinders, Lord, I will go. And can you ask yourself, when entering the church, when if you enter the church, will you live with a curse or a blessing like I said? How many together with me will, will want to, to have an encounter with God? Okay. How many to, will wish to say, I will go? Thank okay. you. Let's all rise as we say, as we say the final prayer. Let's pray. Our kind and loving Heavenly Father, we, our kind and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this hour with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you because you are our God. Thank you because of the lesson that we've learned from the story of King Uzziah and Prophet Isaiah. Lord, speak to us and we pray that you may enable us to be more and more like you even as we continue growing. Be with us this day and the programs ahead in the name of Jesus we pray and believe. Amen. Amen.
Bell TV.